The um, Pelosi January 6th committee is a bogus operation from start to finish. Um, it is uh, not about uh, revealing the truth about January 6th. It's about confirming a narrative. It's about suppressing, in some cases, the truth. And it's also about going after and demonizing Trump supporters, including people who had little or nothing to do with January 6th. But what I'm going to focus on today is the means that are used by the January 6th committee to carry out its nefarious operations. Now, it was... Um, uh, Lord Acton, I believe, who said that absolute power, power corrupts, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. And what Acton is getting at is that power, which is a reality in the world, um, does have to be uh, checked. It requires oversight. It requires legal limitations. John Adams, uh, writing around the time of the founding, spoke about power. He used the word um, dominion, dominion here meaning authority, exercising force over someone else. And uh, John Adams made the point that uh, the, this idea of dominion is kind of a tyrannical impulse in human nature. And again, Adams was talking about the need for power to be balanced, to be checked. And uh, that is what our complex constitutional machinery is supposed to do. Now, I've talked on this podcast about the abuses of the FBI. The FBI, for example, trying to do surveillance on people, getting their bank records. But here's the point. The FBI is under legal limitation. The FBI can't just get your bank records because they feel like it. Um, they do require, they have to go to a judge. They have to get a warrant. They have to get permission. They need to have some defined authority that they can appeal to and say, look right here, this is what gives us the authorization to do this. Interestingly, these limitations do not, or at least in the view of the January 6th committee, do not apply to Congress. Congress can do whatever it wants with no oversight whatsoever. No oversight, certainly not from the executive branch, not even from the judicial branch. Now, let's look at how this plays out in practice. Basically, the January 6th committee started out by getting cell phone records of people. Uh, they'd go to the telecom companies and they say, listen, we want, uh, we're going to give you a list of people, give us their uh, phone records, give us their email logs, give us their text, give us their internet and browsing history. And um, again, uh, this would be one thing and questionable enough if it was limited to the people, for example, who breached the Capitol, who are in some senses, there was probable cause to believe that they had broken the law. But what if you're demanding the phone records of people who didn't even go into the Capitol, who are merely in D.C., or who are merely associated with the Trump administration and have nothing directly to do with January 6th at all? You're just trying to find out how they responded to January 6th or what they said to the president or what they said to somebody else in the White House. Um, and so the um, January 6th committee is on a kind of witch hunt to get these phone records. And again, no... Uh, warrant, no judicial oversight, just give them to us. Now, um, the next move of the January 6th committee, and this is an escalation beyond the phone records and the telecom data, is bank records. So now the FBI, I'm sorry, the January 6th committee makes a list of people and goes to their banks and says, give us their bank records. And not only do we want their bank records, but don't tell them that you're giving us their bank records, because if you do, they could then go to court and try to get a judge to block it. So in other words, give us the bank records in secrecy. There's a very interesting case involving a guy named Taylor Budovich. Now, this is a guy who's a former spokesman for the Trump campaign. And, um, but he's a guy who never worked in the US government. Uh, he has nothing to do with January 6th. He didn't go into the Capitol. But he got us. He got a, um, uh, a request, and I, when I say he, it's not him. The January sixth committee went to his bank, uh, with J.P. Morgan, and said, "Turn over this guy's bank records." Now, interestingly, J.P. Morgan has as its legal advisor for this sort of thing. Guess who? Loretta Lynch. Yes, Loretta Lynch from the Obama administration. So Loretta Lynch says, "Yeah, turn over the bank records." And second, don't tell Budovich that you're doing that. In other words, don't tell our clients that we are 
um, trespassing on their privacy and their secrecy, and we are we are forking over this information to the January sixth uh, committee. Now, um, all of this is um, is highly despicable, particularly because these are people, but which is not suspected of committing any crimes. He has not, in fact, committed any crimes. As I say, his relationship with January sixth is essentially non-existent. Kind of reminds me a little bit of the. Uh, abuses of the war on terror, because in the war on terror, essentially what happened, and and a lot of conservatives were swept up in this. The idea was, hey, listen, there's a war on terror. There are all these bad guys. Who cares about their civil rights? Let's just basically get their bank records. Let's spy on them. Let's figure out what they're really up to, and let's get them. So the idea here was that civil rights um, were kind of um, unnecessary obstacles to getting the bad guys. And what's really chilling is that the left is using this exact model, except we're the bad guys now. It's not some bunch of Syrians who are planning to do X or Y. It's you and me. We're the bad guys. And the left's view is, listen, who cares about their civil rights? Who cares about their privacy? Who cares about uh, the idea that their bank records belong to them? It's something between them and the bank. No, let's let's run roughshod over these guys. And... Um, Glenn Greenwald, who writes an interesting article about all this, says, listen, this is, this is pure McCarthyism. And what he means by this, he's not just using a kind of catchphrase. He says, in the McCarthy era, the House on American Affairs Committee went after people for communist associations. They did exactly the same thing. They went after people's bank records. They went after their communications. Obviously, they didn't have emails in those days. And they essentially said, we are accountable to no one. No, we, we, do, we cannot be overseen by any court or the legislative branch. We can do essentially, we have, in a sense, absolute power. And so uh, you see here a... Um, uh, a committee, the January 6th committee, of dubious constitutional authority. And I say of dubious constitutional authority for the simple reason that it is the job of the executive branch to do these investigations. Oh. It's the job of the DOJ. It's the job of the FBI. Congress can can do investigations, of course, but congressional investigations are usually limited to two things. The first thing is investigations related to lawmaking power. You want to pass a law, let's say, about the environment, you do some investigations into whether there have been environmental abuses that provide a basis, a, a, a justification for passing this new law. The other congressional investigations are based upon the Congress's oversight role. And so if, for example, you suspect that people in the executive branch have abused their congressional authority, that they are doing things outside the limits of the law, yes, Congress can, in fact, do investigations to hold the executive branch accountable. Let's remember that none of that is involved in this case. We're not talking about Congress having oversight of people who are serving in the government. We're talking in the case of Butter, which a guy who's a private citizen. And of course, many of the people who are who went to D.C. on January 6th had nothing to do with the government. They're nurses and they're doctors and they're cops um, and they're ordinary businessmen. And yet Congress is subjecting them to this kind of exacting scrutiny, meddling in their lives, uh, uh, creating a kind of chilling effect and treating them as the domestic opponents, the, the, the domestic uh, threats that they absolutely are not.